Hey guys, my name is Matt with Carolina Coops and today we are in Alabama. We are about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes off the Gulf and behind me is our latest custom chicken coop that we just finished up technically this morning. And what I want to do in this video is really, you know, talk about the coop and really hit on all the details and go over all the things from start to finish. And one of the most important things that I want to make sure people get in this video is that this is completely custom and one of the beginning points of any time a customer calls us is we start with a clean slate, start from scratch. And with this particular coupe, it all started, if we pan over here to uh, the cameraman's left, um, based around this house. And I can't wait, in about a year we're going to come back and do another follow-up where you're going to see it's under construction. Uh, they're still about two, three months away from finishing this home. But again, this coupe was designed based on the house but also the house was designed based on where this chicken coop sits. So hopefully in about a year, we'll talk more about why that is. Anyways, if we come back over here, now some uh, technical stuff. There is a couple things we haven't finished yet. I'm actually waiting for the client to uh, come back this afternoon so we make some final decisions. Basically, what this is is a custom Carolina coop. And what we've done is we've built a run attached to a walk-in hen house and it's perpendicular. So the overall footprint of the run is eight foot deep or eight foot wide by 20 foot long. And it sits on a concrete footer, which is right here, that the contractor poured before we showed up. And then what we did is we put a uh, pressure treated sill plate that we tap con down into the concrete and then attach the coop to that sill plate. And if we come around here, what you'll see is the hen house. Again, it's a walk-in hen house and that is eight by eight. Now there's a lot of detail, so let's start right up at the very top, one of my favorite parts. And again, if we pan back over to the custom home here, you're going to see this beautiful roof, and that is western red cedar that's been hand split. And what that means is they literally split that board right down the middle, and the way it splits is what you get. And that's how you get this beautiful look. You know, if we look up there at the top of the roof, it's just very, I guess, organic, very natural, if you will. Uh, we had a lot of fun installing it and they're very thick so it just gives it a very unique beautiful look and again we match the home. Also uh, what we have is a 12-12 pitch. You'll notice the roof is a lot steeper than our normal chicken coops that we do. So that's a 12-12 pitch so for the uh, rise of 12 inch you go up 12 inches really simple. Um, or basically you have 90 degrees at the peak or it's 45 degrees. Anyways, uh, we also matched the copper drip edge, which you see here. And what that does is make sure you reduce surface tension when it rains. And then underneath that is our regular trim board. Now, what we also did with this particular coupe, again, to match the house, is the clapboard siding. This is all Western red, 100% clear clapboard that we assembled on site. Mm -hmm. And then this client loves her reclaimed wood and so do we so it was an awesome opportunity for us to be able to get back to doing some of the things that I absolutely love to do and that is reclaimed woodworking and some great examples of that is we have this uh, 200 year old barn wood that we made into the egg hutch door and other than that this is our standard egg hutch you can see we also did the hand split cedar shingles right here uh, but we have our um, standard high density polyethylene inside for the egg box and everything else is the same. Dividers are removable. If you ever need more room, chickens are fighting over one spot, give them room for them both to sit in there at the same time. Or again, if you've got a mama hen with some baby chicks. And I'm just getting reminded, a question we get a lot is, what do we use inside the uh, egg hutch for nesting material? Can we use industrial hemp? And I always tell people, you really can use anything, but I don't like industrial hemp. It's too loose. One of the things you want to keep in mind is you want to encourage their instincts. So when you're using nest, nesting material, try to use something long and stringy, like I love hay or straw. You can just put that right in there. Plus, it also is not going to get real messy, which can become a problem down inside here. If they kick out a lot of that material, the door won't shut just like that. So if you have one of our egg hutches and you notice that if you go to shut the door and it doesn't shut just like that, what you got to do is just make sure you clear that out. So another reason why, again, I love the long stringy nesting material. Right here is the door to the hen house. This is where the, you'll gain entry to be able to walk in. This too is also reclaimed barn wood. And we have our standard gate latch with a handle right here. Um, 
And what I did is we just built it just like you would a regular old fashioned door. We have anti sag bar right here. And um, that just takes all the weight and goes right to the stationary point right here where that T hinge is. So you prevent sagging. Also, something else I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video, I guess this is going to be one of those disclaimers. I'm not really this short, but um, the concrete footer is up about 12 inches. So they are actually going to be doing stonework around the foundation. Um, and, and underneath that, they're going to be bringing up the grade about six to eight inches. So you will notice this egg hutch really isn't that high up in the air. Um, normally, you'd be standing probably right about here. So that hopefully will make a lot more sense. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention too is the functioning windows right here. Uh, these are based on our American Coupe that is becoming very popular, this style window. And what we've done is we incorporated the muttons just like we do on our Carolina Coupe. And we like them so much and a lot of customers have loved this design that we're thinking about making this standard with the Carolina Coupe. Where again, you can never have enough ventilation, but yet back in the day, I didn't ever want to lose this look. I love the look of the muttons, I always wanted them to stay put. But the, the function is just really starting to outweigh the look in this case. Again, very, very important to have cross ventilation. And we got our dowels. Again, normally I would be up another 12 inches. We have our dowels up here that are keeping the window open. That is adjustable. And then again, you can close it by using the gate latch right here. So anyways, let's go back inside the hen house. So again, this is an eight by eight hen house. One of the things that I absolutely love about this hen house is when you walk inside, and this is also true for the run area, if you look up, we roofed it just like the old fashioned homes, if you will, the old style, where you have your purlins running across and we get to see the underside of the shingles. So I just think that's an awesome look. You never see that in a home today. Um, so we just took advantage of that. Also back here, um, we have our windows that flip down. It's really, really hot. Uh, so we have them open right now, but if the client ever wants to close them, she just unhooks them, drops it, and you can hook it right here. Um, the uh, electrician did come in and run electric. Uh, we didn't have to in this case, which was good. Timing was kind of not on our side, but they ran it just like we would with the half inch conduit. We put an outlet here and we also have a circuit going up to a um, round box up there where the client can put in a chandelier, which they haven't done yet. And then it just runs right on down to a switch, which is right to the cameraman's left there. So pretty simple uh, and it'll help illuminate this quite well, especially at night. And because it is such a dark color, this is a lot darker in here than normal. Other than that, this is gonna be just like all our other walk-in shed hen house combos. Uh, very, very popular, awesome drawers that these come out. Uh, in this case, we have our industrial hemp. This is our Aubie Chick. This is designed um, specifically for chickens. So this is our industrial hemp that is ground a lot smaller. Uh, we just, again, absolutely love it. Can't say enough about that. You may actually hear some baby chicks. We got some baby chicks inside the brooder. Um, but before we get to that, you'll see uh, we got some more hemp right here. So again, what this does is just allows for excellent, easy, easy storage, 500 pound rating. Um, so right here we have the access to, I guess what I would call the back side of the hen house area. We have a gate latch right here. We have a carabiner for extra protection. If you're not sure what a carabiner is, that's just this guy right here. And what's nice is there's this little hole on this gate latch. If you want to just give yourself guaranteed security, you just put it right through that hole and nothing will ever get in. So anyways, we're going to open this up. So now another disclaimer, again, we're waiting on the client. Uh, to finish up a couple things. One of the things that we're going to be finishing up is uh, her baby chicks are inside the hen house area, which actually I like a lot, but she also has this starter kit that she's using. But I think this afternoon what we're going to do is we're going to take this down and she can use the entire hen house as the brooder. Now, one of the advantages to that is, well, one, it's not inside your house, stinking it up or in your bathtub, what have you. Um, the chickens, this is going to be their home eventually. So it already is now. So there's going to be no acclimation period for the baby chicks or when the chickens get, you know, five to six weeks when they're fully feathered and they can come out to the chicken coop, they're already here. Now it is September, but we're down in deep South Alabama. So it's plenty warm, but there is a heater, uh, inside here that we like a lot and we can get a shot of that. Uh, it mimics a mama hen where they go underneath it. It's very, very safe. And also she has her water where they just sit right on top. Uh, she does have one here and I, I told her and you can see exactly what happens is it just gets really, really dirty and messy and you're constantly cleaning it. Uh, the chickens will still, as you can see, drink out of it, but they do love these vertical nipples right there. 
and they got their little feeder trough right there. So we will be using the industrial hemp. Uh, one of the things the client was worried about is the chickens eating this. And to me, it's easy to confuse when chickens are eating something or if they're pecking at something, checking it out. They're, they're going to do the same thing. They do the same thing with pine shavings. Doesn't mean they're eating it. That's a lot of times they're, way, you know, chickens are very curious creatures and that's their way of smelling or checking things out, just pecking at it. So um, we have a lot of customers that use industrial hemp for uh, their brooder and it's kind of an expensive way to do it because they might be cleaning out more often versus incorporating the deep litter system. But because she is in this case going to incorporate the deep litter system, she can just add this now and never have to clean it out just because it's starting to stink. She can already start to deep litter that and the baby chicks will be just fine. Other than that, everything else is the same. We got our um, roost bars that are on our sockets. We got the window on the other side. Also, maybe we can get a good shot of probably the one time that I would say you, it is nice to have a chicken door because, again, that opening right there that the chickens will eventually go out into the run area is always protected by the run. But since she's going to be raising baby chicks, she's not going to want them to go out there right away. So this is a nice time to make sure we keep that closed. Other than that, I also want to point out just tons and tons of headroom. You can see up inside the roof um, that there's just a lot of cubic footage for, uh, you know, I, I guess the easiest way I can explain is room for error. You know, you don't want a little tiny hen house that can heat up real quick. Um, one disadvantage of having a shingled roof like this is we don't have the full ventilation like we do with a ridge cap but again there's so much room here and so much already cross ventilation you got ventilation on all four sides that you don't have to worry about you'll never notice the difference and when that hot air does rise it won't be where the chickens are sleeping at night and plus if she ever wanted to add more roost bars she definitely has room but sometimes again you want to be careful with your chicken to coop ratio you don't want to overload it and no one wants to be on that bottom roost bar if you if you know what i'm saying we got our normal swing out doors we were doing our sliding doors they they looked cool they sounded cool but the the fact of the matter is debris was getting caught in the track so we just stopped doing that and realized the old simple t-hinge style doors work just fine and also if we check out this one area you can see um there's her starter kit we put the instruction manual for a chicken guard which is her run door i think inside here love these cans um, that's her starter feed, so it keeps that nice and neat. Also, with this metal can, keeps the rodents out. And then also notice the lockout cable right here. Oh yeah, check out this shot of the cupola. You know, that just looks awesome. You see the copper flashing for the valley, going up to the copper drip edge underneath the cupola. And we shingled the top of the cupola roof and chopped and dropped that weather vane absolutely love that weather vane we think it's absolutely perfect and yes guy when i got up there i used my compass to make sure the north south east west is going in the right direction um i actually so i guess since we're back here again they're going to be doing a lot of grading so um nothing's finished here you can see we're probably about 16 inches below where you can see the foundation but what i want to point out back here is just this beautiful arched windows that's another thing that we wanted to go along with um, with the design of her house she has several arched doors that are going to be going in so i wanted to copy that and we made those beautiful arched windows but still stayed with our traditional design and i think they look really good and that's also a great shot at all that cedar clapboard see right here you see the electrician just has his lb they're going to be running a dedicated circuit and powering up the uh, hen house which they haven't done yet which is the reason why you're going to see a yellow cord coming through the run unfortunately so over here one of the things that we didn't think of in advance and we're still hopefully going to have this finished by this afternoon but we uh, have a heated rain system yes even down here in way south alabama i guess it freezes a couple hours a year so we wanted to make sure that um, their water system didn't freeze and we have their rain barrel system right here and we had the electric ran for right here one of the things i didn't think of is it's right in front of her egg hutch now there's plenty of room again i'm down 12 inches but same thing as the other side real easy access to get to the eggs and there's plenty of room but it's not the best looking view when you have this rain barrel right in the way so we're not exactly sure what we're going to do with that yet um, if we walk around here and actually before i forget for you youtube chicken police 
very very important even though we have a concrete footer right here and it does go down I think about six to eight inches that wasn't enough to make me feel 100% confident against an animal digging underneath so we did put in a predator apron but you'll notice we did not go around the hen house that's because that is one solid slab they are not going to be able to get up underneath there but they could potentially dig down you know the six to eight inches and get up inside the run so that's why we put the apron in here and this is all going to disappear when they do their final grade we have very popular dutch door really really sweet to have this i used to say it was mainly for bragging rights but i have learned there is some great advantages let's say you can't free range and you want to throw your table scraps in here and you don't want your girls to get out on you you can just take your table scraps throw it right inside there and then just close this or if you do free range and you don't have an automatic door and you got one of those dogs that constantly wants to go into the chicken coop well this is a great way to let your girls learn to come out through the top and as long as your dog can't jump over this it keeps the dogs out so just uh, actually something that a customer told me about that I thought was pretty slick about the Dutch doors anyways um, and again same uh, gate latch here with the lockout cable so we're gonna open this up and we'll take a walk inside so another thing I want to point out that I absolutely love about this run with the 12 12 pitch we measured it we have 12 foot I think it was actually 11 and a half feet from where I'm standing all the way up to the peak and you'll see what we had to do with this particular design is we couldn't do our trusses we did one big large glue lamb so there's that big glue lamb beam that runs all the way across and we notched into the six by sixes and carriage bolted it up at the top to hold all that weight. And then we have our rafters. And again, you can see our purlins and the underside of that cedar along with the underside of the copper for the uh, valley flashing. Just think it looks absolutely awesome. You'll notice the black wires that are all stapled there just above the electrical conduit. That's where the soffit lighting. I tried to get some good pictures of that last night. It was a little tough, but it looks absolutely amazing. Um, some other things I want to point out. Actually, I guess we'll start right over here. Again, we're not exactly sure yet where we're going to put the water bar. My intentions were plan A. We're going to put it here. We've got to screw these boards in so that the water bar can come in here but we got to have plenty of room to make the connection on this side of the pump and then for the return hose over here one of the ideas is to actually turn it put the rain barrel over there but our water bar is too long to put over there and one of the things that i was thinking about doing and i know this would actually turn into a major problem but the uh, client i mean she did come up with an idea she said well let's put it on the end of the run i said oh that's a great idea and so i got looking at it one it doesn't fit and even if i bumped it out a little bit you know and shortened it the chickens are going to use this as a roost bar and that's the last thing you want is chickens roosting on and defecating on their water source so anyways that's why that's not attached yet um, the other thing that i wanted to point out is we have our brand new ladders and there's many reasons why we decided to change it number one i think this looks really really good number two it's helping us burn up even more scrap so we have some more material a better functioning ladder going into the hen house for the chickens um, and we have not raised the price the other thing I did add is this is gonna be one of the dirtiest areas of the chicken coop and for some people it just drives them nuts and they want to be able to easily take it off take it outside clean it let the Sun dry it it'll sterilize it and then you can bring it right back in here so how we do that is just these shepherds hooks that go right into the end grain here and we just have eye bolts right here it's just that simple and you just hook it right on set it down and you're done the other thing I absolutely love you know we're talking about the uh, chicken door again not needed but in this case because she is gonna be using this as a brooder does serve a great function I know a lot of our clients especially up north they like to be able to close it off to help try to keep it warmer um, and also you know redundancy I guess in security I am 100% confident, knock on wood, we've never had a predator ever make it into our coops, but some customers do like this as extra backup, especially at night. You know, that's when your predator pressure is going to be at its highest. But anyways, um, you can flip this open. I kind of copied our other door. We've got a couple crossbars here with an anti-sag, and you can just close, the, or I'm sorry, hook this right to this eye bolt here so the wind doesn't shut it on the chickens. And technically, once these girls are full grown and they're going in and out on their own, she'll never have to close this, except for maybe hurricane season. So we'll come over here 
So this is our first time doing the, this style door. We took the same function of all our back hen house doors. We put it on the inside of the run area. And we did that for several reasons. One, for the aesthetics, the client, she wanted to be able to look into the run when she's standing at her kitchen window and be able to see all the action going on inside here with her chickens. Um, also, you know, it would be a shame to put these on the back of the hen house and hardly ever see them. And the other thing that I really like about this is with the, the deep litter door being right here and she, when she does go to clean it after a couple years she can actually throw the litter right into the run and allow it to continue to compost but anyways again can never have enough ventilation we have our arch doors right here to match that arch theme but we ran into a challenge we wanted to make sure they still had the ability to have like we have with the lift off doors well what we came up with is just to pop these out and we actually inlaid some magnets right here to help keep them in. So it's the first time we've done this. Uh, so far it's working really well, but being that this is, again, 200 year old reclaimed barn wood down in Alabama, it's gonna move a lot. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that continues to work. Now, it's been really, really humid, so I know the wood right now is probably at its largest and it probably will shrink, so that's why we actually ended up adding those magnets to help keep those doors in. So again, um, these just pop right out and we can go ahead and take these off. The baby chicks inside won't mind. And get a good look at that. Lots of ventilation. Um, I did try to paint over the magnets and I think that actually caused it to not work as strong. So I went and scraped them off. I was trying to hide it, but I don't think it looks bad at all. But again, you see the nice, beautiful arch. We mortised the hinges. We got our regular gate latch right here. We can open this right up and pretty much everything else is the same. Yeah, they're just arched, beautiful reclaimed barn wood right here. And we have our deep litter door. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to point out, if you are going to use your hen house as a brooder, chickens are creatures of habit. We want to make sure they do not start any bad habits and a bad habit they can start is roosting inside their egg hutches. So what we've done is we've taken some of our uh, one by 12 trim board and just screwed them on to make sure the chickens don't get in there. So you'll notice you can't see inside the egg hutch. Once they're about, I'd say, I don't know, 18 to 20 weeks when they're getting ready to start laying, I'll recommend to the client to start, uh, to take them off and put the nesting material in there. And definitely by then they will be used to and love their roost bars right here. Well, other than that, you know, you can see this is just like our other, all our chicken coops. You got the high density polyethylene, real easy to clean out. We are at grade and you can see there's no bending over, pulling, sweeping motion when it is time to clean. And again, the nice thing about that the hen house, the front of the hen house is facing the, the uh, run area. She can just pull all this material and just broadcast it right inside her run and it'll continue to compost. Or she can bring in a wheelbarrow, a trash can, pull that stuff out put it in the trash can and take it to another compost if she wants. So let's go ahead and close this up. So speaking of composting inside the run, we did get a great video. We had a gentleman that showed up that delivered this um, compost material. Uh, Cecil was his name. We got a great video and he, we did pick his brain about it. And you know, a question we get a lot is, you know, what do I put inside my run? And he made some great points. So what this is, is a, pH neutral uh, compost material. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention too, you'll notice we got a yellow cord running through here, the yellow Romax. That's because they have not, again, they have not powered up the electric inside their chicken coop. Once they do, she'll be able to plug in her little heater that she's using to keep her baby chicks warm inside the plug inside the hen house. But right now we're just running that through here. So I know it doesn't look the best, but you know, it is what it is. Got to keep the baby girls warm. But if you come over here, I just want to point this out again. We love, one, we're huge advocates of free ranging. Um, even though she has a nice big size run, you can never have enough run space. Letting them free range is ideal. And one of the great ways to do that is with an automatic chicken door. And in this case, it's Chicken Guard. It's been our favorite automatic door. And the other thing that uh, they've added recently that I like a lot, and we'll demonstrate it right now, I have it in manual mode. I'm just gonna press this button and it's already calibrated and it knows where to stop. There's little magnets on a spool. So basically it counts it so it knows when to stop. But if you look down here, you know, one of the things that you gotta be careful with automatic doors, especially guillotine style, is you don't want animals to lift it up. Look at that, perfect. 
but it locks. You can't lift it up. You could have it come on when the sun comes up and it'll come up by the photocell. If you want it to shut early or vice versa, you can do it with a timer. And the other nice thing about these uh, chicken guards is it doesn't require 110, doesn't require solar. They are four AA batteries. I believe the manufacturer says to change them out every six months, but we've seen them last a year. Regular half inch hardware, uh, PVC coated hardware cloth, very standard. We use that all the time and it's nice because it's black, it's see-through. You can see here we have the transformer. Um, this is what powers the soffit lighting. This will get plugged in right here once they energize the circuit and just real, you know, it's low voltage, steps it all down to 12 volt DC and looks awesome at night. And one of the things that we did verify that does work well is when you have soffit lighting, if you get it too bright, it could actually screw the chickens up a little bit. But more importantly, if you're having an automatic door closed by a photo cell, and I made this mistake, uh, we couldn't figure out why a door wasn't working. Well, it was because we had this come on on a photo cell when it got to a certain darkness where the light turned on and the door always thought the sun was up. But in this case, we do have a light above it. It just works out. That's where we want it for looks. But it was perfect where it's not too bright where the door did close. We verified that again last night. Anyways, I guess that's probably everything inside the run. Let's take a walk around the outside. Positioning of that cupola. Oh! Yeah, right. This is huge. So I broke a major, major rule. Shawnee, I'm glad you brought that up. I forgot all about it. Yeah, so I, I don't like fake. I don't like faux. I, I, it drives me crazy. I, I can't stand seeing these other chicken coops that, you know, they, they look pretty because they have this Chinese made cupola. They put it above their run and it's non functional. It just drives me nuts because, again, cupolas are designed to help make sure we exhaust the hot air. Well, where we want to do that on a chicken coop is above the hen house, not above the run, because it's already wide open. Well, here's what happened. If we come around here, and uh, Ingrid, now's the time to probably bring up some pictures where I took it, where it was above the hen house. We did have it directly above the hen house, and boy, I was minutes from screwing that in, cutting the holes, allowing it to ventilate, and I kept looking at it going, you don't see it from the perspective that the client has been very adamant about and that is she wants to be able to see this beautiful chicken coop out her kitchen window well a lot of work went into that cupola and you couldn't see it so luckily she showed up i want to say like five ten minutes later and she goes i can't see the cupola and i'm glad you brought it up i said what do you think about putting it over over top of the run which again i can't stand because it doesn't serve a purpose now other than strictly looks but we did it and I'm hoping everyone agrees. I know I absolutely love it. I think it was an absolute must because um, it just looks so much better up there. And again, look at all the detail, uh, all the cedar roofing to the muttons to match the coop and the clapboard also to match the hen house. Yeah, Shawnee, I'm glad you brought that up. I completely forgot about it. So yeah, I broke my own rules, but this is the one time I'm gonna say it was definitely worth it, especially if we come around this way and get a shot of what the coop looks like from how the customer is going to see it. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And again, this is a construction site. So you see all the red clay. We got conduit trying to protect the uh, Romex that's going inside there. Didn't really work with the track unit, but anyways, um, going through the little automatic door there, which is a great shot. All that beautiful cedar roofing, the copper, and that's going to patina over time. It's going to darken up and then eventually turn green. Oh, and here's the other thing too. When we do a 12-12 pitch, notice these walls are a lot taller. The client didn't ask for our, our, a taller wall. You know, our standard wall on the side is usually six foot, but we have to make that taller because we have a much larger face on the tail of the rafter. So that just kind of has to happen for design purposes. Uh, this was a huge custom coupe, and it took us, it's got to be one of the longest coupes it ever took for us to put together. Three and a half guys, Evan left early. It's a beautiful coupe. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. Again, the biggest thing I want, if you're watching this video and you're thinking about getting a custom coupe, especially from us, to, one of the questions we also get a lot is, well, I, you know, I'm in Europe. I wish you guys could come here. Can you come here? Absolutely, or Australia. Uh, you know, we've shipped there, but we haven't done any custom coupes yet overseas, but there's absolutely no reason why we couldn't. We have become masters at figuring out how to build it in modular form inside the shop and then ship it out or in this case we throw it in the trailer and drive all around the country and into Canada putting it together and we travel with an entire arsenal of tools so that there's nothing we can't handle once we get on site so again 
it doesn't matter where you live we can get a custom coop there and remember we are excellent woodworkers but we're also chicken people and that's where you get the best of both worlds and you, hopefully in this video you see that all right guys so listen thank you so much for watching the video if you're not already following us on instagram please go over to instagram follow us there uh, definitely hit that like button for this video if you didn't like it you're going to hit the unlike button or dislike the thumbs down make sure you leave the comment down below uh, we do appreciate all comments good or bad obviously i want to have all good comments and if you have any questions please leave them down below can't thank you enough for watching this video Follow us on Instagram. Give us a like over at Facebook. Hit that bell. I think it's up here in the corner, maybe. If not, maybe we can put a link right here. Hit that bell so you can be notified every time we have a new video coming up. And of course, check us out at carolinacoops.com. And you can always give us a call. It's my favorite way of hearing from you guys. 919-794-3989. Thanks for watching. The ideal height for uh, um, a horizontal nipples is just below or just above chest height. So your, your hens, when they're fully grown, their heads will be right about here. So this will be a great height for different sized chickens. But when they're a little bit younger, I have had a lot of clients just put some blocks right here. Okay. Chickens will fight over a nest box. And an easy way to solve that is you can just pull these dividers out and there's no more fighting. Also, and you're gonna have a lot of fun with this, uh, if one of your hens go broody and she's sitting on a clutch of eggs and they hatch, this makes a nice easy spot for those babies in the beginning before they go out. I can't really see. I feel like a mascot. <laughs> I always said I wanted to do this and uh, no, not anymore. They are happy. Look at them eating. Make sure we get a good shot of that. Um, I, I want you to notice these walls are a lot taller. And if I remember correctly, I don't think um, you actually asked for taller walls, but that does happen naturally with the construction design when we do go to the 12-12 pitch, which you did ask for so we can match um, the roof line in your house and it's always fun when you step back and you can see the matching parallel lines. Um. So we ended up with some Polish, some little Polish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see the top hat there, the crest Got our cute yeah. little crest going, yeah. our funny hairdo. So I want to hit on that point. Again, I can't emphasize it enough. I have so many people, especially when they're brand new to chickens, they are so concerned about keeping the chickens warm in the winter. If you block the wind chill, they'd be perfectly fine at cold temperatures. It's the heat. That is what will stress the chickens. All right, so here's the uh, foundation we're putting in the sill. And if there's ever a time to fill this up so your chickens have something nice to scratch in, it's now. It's under sod. We build beds up with it, raised beds. I've never used it in the chicken coop. This is brand new for me. I've learned this something every day of my life, and just today I'm learning about chicken. Cool. Great question. <laughs> um, so you have two. <laughs> chicken math is going to get you bad.